We're at ASCO 2013 with Dr. Marcia Brose from the Abramson Cancer Center in Philadelphia. Dr. Brose is presenting research on the decision trial, differentiated thyroid cancer treated with serafinib. Dr. Brose, tell us a little bit about the outcomes for these patients. Well, up till now, they've had actually no therapy. So the outcome currently for these patients is once surgery and radioactive iodine stop working, the patients have an overall survival of two and a half to three and a half years. And that, that time is marred with significant progression and disease-related um, complications. So currently, the outcome is poor. Um, there hasn't been any, any options for these patients. How, how was it that uh, serafinib was picked as a therapy for these patients? You know, it, that's an interesting, an interesting story. I actually have been working with colleagues on some of the other uh, studies of serafinib in renal cancer, and there's a lot of similarities, it turns out, between thyroid cancer and some of these other ones. You know, we, we know that renal cancer is a very vascular tumor, and thyroid cancer is a very vascular tumor. And we know that kinase inhibitors are really good at inhibiting kinases, and it turns out that over 70% of differentiated thyroid cancer is associated with a mutation or genetic alteration in kinase pathways. So it was a sort of an, a natural leap to say, well, if these drugs work well in those, in those cancers, then maybe we should be trying it in, in, in thyroid cancer. Prior to this, the standard of treatment is radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine. And when radioactive iodine fails, there were no therapeutic options. Correct. So there's nothing for those patients. And they're only treated palliatively at that point. Mm -hmm. And now, serafinib is available. Mm -hmm. um, how does this change practice approaches? Well, you know, we have phase two data and, and, and serafinib is available, and, and it was a good thing. But really, practice approaches rely on pivotal phase three studies because, of course, there have been many phase two studies that did necessarily you know, flush out when you had a large well control trial. And so we're hoping that with the, result, the positive results from the decision trial, which showed that the PFS was extended by five months from 5.8 to 10.8 months, that with this good data in over 400 patients, that this will be the data that we need to really change practice approaches and, and have it be firmly the first line approach for patients with this disease. So as a result of this trial, with this, with this positive result from the phase three study, we're now hoping that it will be available for everybody to prescribe and that now patients will actually get the treatment that they need. And a lot of these patients are initially seen by endocrinologists, are they not? That's correct. It's actually an interesting thing that we're going to have to educate a lot of people because up till now, these patients aren't even seen by oncologists. So there has to be a message to the endocrinologist to let them know that there are options and to refer them to, to oncologists who also need to be educated on thyroid cancer because, of course, they're not educated on that. And so um, once, what's really going to be important is that the oncologists who are treating these patients know about thyroid cancer. They have some education that they're going to have to, to learn a lot about these patients because they are different and they have different needs. And you did mention that these patients, um, that this type of cancer, it's somewhat rare. Mm -hmm. So that this was a very successful trial in the, to the extent that you were able to accrue enough people. Correct to participate. So, yeah. so, so, uh, so thyroid cancer is the most common endocrine malignancy and there'll be 60,000 patients a year. However, if you take just the patients who have RAI refractory, radioactive iodine refractory disease, now you're talking about only two to maybe as many as 6,000 a year. Well, that makes it an orphan, an orphan disease. It's very rare. And so that's been an obstacle to actually performing a large pivotal phase three study like the one we did because we actually had to enroll patients in 89 sites worldwide in order to accrue enough patients. But I think it was a testament to the, to the need because we actually enrolled that many patients in under two years. So in spite of it being a rare cancer, this was actually a very successful and rapidly accruing trial. Thank you so much, Dr. Burroughs. Wonderful oh. to talk to you. That's nice to be here. Thank you.